So what is up guys, it is Nisho here, and so the next and possibly my very favorite archetype from Legendary Duelist is the Water Dragon slash Bonding archetype. So this is a deck based around, um, you know, Water Dragons, as you know, you can tell, and uh, the dinosaur monsters that it uses um, are all based on certain elements on the periodic table. So we have a Hydrogenon based off of Hydrogen, Oxygenon based off of Oxygen, and in this set, we got Dual Terion, which is like a double oxygen in one. It's like an atomic bond where two oxygens come together. From what I've researched, I wasn't too good at chemistry, so um, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, the whole pun with his card is that um, since it's like two hydrogenons in one, um, he has an extra level and extra attack. So it's pretty cool. And so um, there's three real... Three big reasons why I really love this deck. Um, first off is that Zabuza was like my favorite character from Naruto. And you know, one of his signature moves was like Water Dragon Jutsu. If you ever played like one of the Storm games or anything, like you would know what I'm talking about. And like all, like every water um, chakra user like can pretty much do Water Dragon Jutsu. But you know, it's all like, again, Zabuza is my favorite character. So I, I just think it's nice that, you know, I get like a deck that can kind of use Water Dragons. Um, second off is because he uses dinosaurs. Um, you've probably seen my intro. <laughs> so you've seen Ultimate Conductor. You've seen Soul Eating Over After. You've seen the Little Petite Ter Ter Pteranodon, or however the hell you pronounce his name. So the fact that he uses dinosaurs is pretty cool. I can put Ultimate Conductor Tyrano in here. I can put Soul Eating Over After in this deck, Miscellaneous Source, and just have a whole bunch of fun with it, uh, just trying out different combos and everything with uh, this deck. And third off is that it's chemistry based, although chemistry isn't really my strong suit, I do just like the theme of like science in a deck. So um, it's pretty cool and appealing to me. Uh, I hope you can see see what I'm saying here, but uh, yeah, let's just get into the actual cards. Now, I never played Water Dragon. I never cared about the original Water Dragon, but like seeing the support kind of has made me want to make it so um i may or may not do a deck profile of this deck in the future who knows so starting off with the big double water dragon we got water dragon cluster so he can't be normal summoner set and must be special summoned by a bonding spell chop card and no must first be it's just strict only bonding spell and chop cards that's the only way you're allowed to summon them if it is special summoned, you can activate this effect. Effect monsters your opponent controls, um, currently controls, cannot activate their effects for the rest of this turn, and also their attack becomes zero. So when he's summoned, he just, he's kind of like a, a Utopia Beyond. He just uh, puts everything to zero, and he uh, negates their effects as well. And he also has a quick effect where you contribute this card, special summon two Water Dragon uh, two of the original water dragons from your hand and or deck in, de in defense position ignoring their summoning conditions So he literally splits. Um, I forgot what it's called when uh, Adam split Or molecule split. I think it's called cloning. I think I think that's what it is, but Whatever, I don't know chemistry as I said chemistry is in my strong suit. So uh, don't Don't get too mad at me. So next we have a dual Terion, which is pretty, uh, probably like my favorite uh, of, uh, one of my favorite dinosaurs that I've seen like ever. So it's level five, 2000 attack, and you can discard this card, add one bonding spell chop card from your deck to your hand. So immediately the bonding spell and chop cards have a searcher that is also searchable itself because it's a dinosaur. It's a level five dinosaur. You can search it either with fossil dig or with soul eating Obi Raptor or with even a Petit Pterodon, um, you know, since it's it summons out level four and higher dinos when it's destroyed, so it definitely has uh, quite a bit of synergy. Second off is that when it's normal or special summon, you can target one Hydrogen, Hydrogeddon, Oxygeddon, or Dual Tarion in your graveyard, special summon it uh, in any position, apparently. So um, that's also pretty solid just because he can, uh, uh, like, if you do use Petit Pterodon for, to summon him, he can either summon another copy of himself from a graveyard, Oxygen, or Hydrogen, 
And, uh, you know, with uh, stuff like Mastarboy coming out, um, he can, like, since Hydrogen and hi him himself are both waters, um, you can special those guys. Or, you know, Oxygen in case you need it for, like, a bonding ch uh, spell trap card. Or if you need, like, just uh, more attack on field, you can always just go another copy of himself. So it, it, it's it's real good, actually. I, I kind of, I, I like, I really like this card. And so it, it's like you can drop it from Grave to Search. And then, like, if you pop a, a, a Petite Pterodon with something like a Diagram or with a True King or if even Soul, Eat, Soul Eating Oviraptor, you get a special amount of Dual Tarion and then special them back the one that you dropped to search that bonding spell trap card. So it's pretty lit. So the two bonding spell and trap cards that we've gotten to set both, uh, one is bonding uh, D2O and the other one is bonding DHO. So D2O uses two dual ter terion and uh, DHO uses one of each of the uh, elements. So it uses one dual terion, one hydrogen and one oxygen. So both of them do require Duotarion, so he's pretty much like a staple three of in the deck. Like, this, that's not even debatable, <laughs> just because of how many uh, these these guys require. So, Bonding D2O, the spell card, you tribute two Duotarion and one Oxygen in your hand and or field. So, it doesn't have to be all on the field, but it just might be easier um, just because of Duotarion's effect, especially coming out Hydrogen's and uh, uh, copies of itself from Graveyard. And then you special summon one Water Dragon or Water Dragon Cluster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So pretty much from anywhere, except for the Banish Zone, you, you get to summon either copy of uh, either a Water Dragon Cluster or a Water Dragon. So if um, both your Water Dragon Clusters got banished, I don't know why you wouldn't summon Water Dragon Cluster over Water Dragon. Like, just saying. But if somehow your Water Dragon Clusters got banished, however money you run, then you get to you have the option of summoning out Water Dragon. Um, or, you know, if you want to make a rank 8 or something and you already have one water dragon on board, you get to special them out the other one. So, it's pretty cool. And uh, it has a graveyard effect. If water dragon or water dragon cluster is sent from your field to the graveyard while this card is in your graveyard, you get to add it back to your hand. So, it recycles itself. Um, but it's only when it's sent from your field to the graveyard. So, the original water dragon is level 8, so you would be able to use something like trade in with it. Um, it would have been amazing if I would have, like if a combo would have been like, okay, I Foolish Burial Goods bonding D2O and then I trade in my Water Dragon so that I get to draw two cards and then add back my bonding D2O. That would have been cool, but unfortunately that's not the case here. Still though, um, it, it, it still does work pretty well and uh, I do like the fact that it even has a graveyard effect that can uh, make it uh, recyclable. So that's pretty cool. Like you can drop it with something like uh, Twin Twisters or something and not even feel like too bad about it just because it can bring itself back. And lastly, we have Bonding DHO where you shuffle a Dualitarion, a Hydrogeton, and an Oxygeton from your hand or graveyard, not your field, into the deck. So since this is a trap card, um, you know, you can do this during your opponent's turn as well. You special known Water Dragon Cluster from your hand or your graveyard. So Water Dragon Cluster already has to be accessible. You know, by that I mean already in the hand or graveyard, because usually it would be searchable if it was in the deck. But unfortunately, Bonding DHO doesn't get it from the deck. You, like you would already have to have a copy of it somewhere, you know, in your hand, or if you're unfortunate to draw it. But you know, um, both Bonding D2 and Bonding DHO do summon Water Dragon Cluster from the graveyard, so um, you shouldn't be too scared to discard it. So if you ever do draw it. You can just discard it for something, um, and you know, or if you're playing Diagram, you can just pop it with Diagram and then get something else. So yeah, that's actually real convenient. And you can banish this card from your graveyard, add one Water Dragon or Water Dragon Cluster from your deck to your hand. Okay, so Foolish Burial Goods definitely does have a good place in this deck because not only do these guys have graveyard effects, um, it, it has a way to search into either Water Dragon. So, um, botting DHO can search um, either one just by dropping, uh, banishing itself from grave. So, you know, if you're playing Foolish Burial Goods, uh, you know, it's actually a real good option just because, you know, you have the option to either uh, drop DHO and then search a Water Dragon and then go into something like a trade-in because, you know, trade-in does drop level 8s. 
Um, or, you know, you can do whatever else. So Water Dragon Cluster, I, I do think it works real nice just because, um, you know, with the support, uh, like going back to it, like, it's real easy to summon with the bondings. Um, I don't know how easy it is, like the bondings are to like, uh, actually, um, like, I don't know how easy it'll be like in a normal duel to actually pull off both of these effects. But, um, I, I do feel like it'll, it'll be pretty, pretty damn easy just because of, uh, the fact that you're using dinosaurs and, um, you know, uh, you know, like pretty much everything here, like everything in the deck is searchable. So, I mean, I do get that there may be times where you're going to have like the wrong materials or you may not have both to deal with Tarions or you may be missing one or you may get a Oxygen instead of Hydrogen. That's, that's definitely understandable. So, uh, you know, like Yang Zing Dino and True King Dino do, do like brick enough already. So having like this whole Water Dragon theme. I know I don't think it will be a bad deck to play if you're looking for something casual and something fun as long as you don't invest in diagrams like you should be fine <laughs> uh, yeah it's it's still a pretty cool deck uh, it has a little bit of power dragon cluster contributes self summon out two water dragons two level eight water dragons in defense where they both have 2600 defense that is really not a bad option and you know water dragons can even go into a star boy go into rank eights um, the deck has a lot of options just because they're dinosaurs, I, like that's that's really what I like the most about um, this archetype. But tell me what you guys think about it in the comments below. This was Nisha here talking about the Water Dragon bonding deck, uh, my favorite archetype of the set. So um, hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys on the next one with the next archetype I'm going to talk about from Legendary Duelist.